Well, I was just going through uh, one of the newspapers here, but uh, thank you for keeping it right here on the Joy Sports channel of Multi TV as I bring you an eye in 30 minutes, as usual, of everything to look forward to. It's Barcelona hosting Real Madrid this weekend. Who wins that big clash? It's the uh, El Clasico, part one. And uh, I'm sure that the fans have already started the arguments on the streets already. And we also continue the build-up to Ghana versus Egypt. I mean, Egypt versus Ghana this time around. The return leg for the final playoff for World Cup 2014 in Brazil. As uh, fans in Accra express uh, various thoughts as regards to the hosting venue of that big game. Uh, already, Black Star skipper Asamoah has been speaking about how he and his colleagues are a bit uncomfortable with playing that game in Egypt. What are your thoughts? Get on my Facebook wall. It's Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto. Or alternatively, if you're on your mobile phone, then just go through 1760, which is the short code, at only 30 Ghana pesos, and let your voice be heard as well right here on the show. We thrive on your views. You know that. So we'll be bringing you some more of that. Uh, Vitaly Klitschko wants to run for president in Ukraine. Big news coming in there. And also we'll be telling you about how there are some coaching casualties in the Ghana Premier League ahead of March Day 9. And of course, uh, the latest is uh, Coach J.E. Sapong, who bows out of Adriana Stars after pressure from the fans and some threats as well. So um, what will be the direction as we see new, two coaching casualties uh, within a very, very short period of time? What does it also do uh, in terms of effect on the teams? Uh, you know, uh, who are affected uh, as we go ahead and progress in round one of the Ghana Premier League 2013-2014. Uh, so you'll be my guest as we look ahead to this uh, big weekend as well. All the Manchester United fans have to get ready because it's a big game. Man U Stoke this weekend and we'll be looking ahead to that big game as well as the two teams prepare. Remember, Manchester United uh, can get a possible 12 points but only have... Um, Five at the moment, and it is a struggle that goes on with the man David Moyes, who is under a lot of pressure to deliver. Walking in the shoes or walking in the uh, shadows of the man, the great man himself, uh, Sir Alex Ferguson. Well, so um, you stay right there, uh, don't go anywhere. This is the weekend edition. We'll be doing so much more right here on the show. So, um, a round of commercials immediately after that, I bring you the newspapers. Well, I just went in box uh, on Facebook, and I got uh, the very first message that is coming from Mado Thomas. He says, Messi and Neymar will frustrate Madrid come tomorrow. Ose Barca, no size. <laughs> so I'm expecting some more of your messages here on the show today. Let's now get into what's on the graphic sports newspaper. Rather, rather interesting, um, you know, uh, topic, if you ask me, uh, this is the front page of the Graphic Sports uh, uh, newspaper, and it says, uh, no special bonus for the Black Stars if they win the game against Egypt. Okay, so uh, all the shouts from various sections of the public has been, uh, have been uh, heeded to. So, well, classical showdown. One more time is the two lead men, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo and... Uh, Lionel Messi, who's returned from injury in good time to be a part of this big game. The details of that story on the bonuses is on the back page of the uh, graphic sports newspaper written by Rosalind Amo. And also, Asipiwe Chabalala is featured on the Lifestyle page. Um, 2010 best player in South Africa. So there we are. Great examples of players who play back at home and enjoy all the golden roses, if you ask me. He's a businessman as well, has a fast food chain called the Fish and Chips Company. A logo there at the bottom. And he also enjoys a, a game of pool. Uh, in one of the pictures, he also uh, displays uh, the, one of the many awards that he's won. And there's also a picture of one of the townships where I guess he comes from. In South Africa, Sipiwe Chabalala, great, great uh, player, uh, a great asset to uh, the South African national team. Now, um, when did football come to Ghana? I'm sure that that's a question that many would want to answer, but you need the facts. Well, Dr. 
uh, Owusu Ansa of the um, University, uh, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, he writes that one. Um, you can have a look. And uh, you wait for Champions League action. Wednesday matches captured right here. Um, in fact, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday matches. Uh, Sule Ali Montari there, shrugging off a challenge from Andreas Iniesta. And of course, Andre Didi, are you there? Puts his chest to a ball that wants to escape him. Of course, the man Jose Mourinho, a central character, there's no doubt about that. And of course, Kevin Prince Boating, who returns from a knee injury to perform beautifully in that game against Chelsea, which Schalke eventually won, uh, lost by three goals. And uh, Wayne Rooney will celebrate with his teammates in that 1-0 uh, uh, win. And of course, uh, the Liberty coach is blaming lack of sharpness on the part of his uh, defense. After that loss to uh, Accra Hearts of Oak in that derby. Okay, some more stories in the graphic sports newspaper. You'd want to quickly take a look at what's happening um, in the... Um, And uh, there, is, there is a big uh, preview here at the El Clasico showdown. And uh, these are two other names, interestingly, Neymar and uh, Gareth Bale. <laughs> Most expensive player or not, there are still some names that surely capture the headlines whether you like it or not. Alien Hopkins wants a Mayweather showdown. At age uh, 49... Um, Bernard Hopkins is going on and on and now wants a showdown with the undisputed king himself, uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Okay, the boxing world surely is going to experience some very, very big bouts uh, next year, uh, even if uh, the Pacquiao Mayweather bout that has been much sought after does not come through. Remember that we're also, with Ghanaian interest, uh, gra gra gradually getting closer and closer to that December 7 date when Joseph Agbeko will take on double world champion, um, double super bantamweight world champion, um, Guillermo Rigondo from Cuba. Let's uh, do some more here, and um, this is it. We've got the uh, 90 Minutes newspaper. It's got Sule Ali Montari. On the front page, it says, uh, Didi Ayu praises amazing Higuain. Um, Muntari says, you are God. God saved Barca on that day. Okay. After that great performance against Barcelona in the Champions League. On the back page, there is uh, the crazy world of Mario Balotelli. And you want to ask yourself, is he scratching? Ow. <laughs> of course, you would expect something like this when it's coming from the man... Uh, Mario Balotelli uh, will keep uh, bringing us the bizarre headlines uh, for as long as he remains uh, alive, I think. Um, and also there are pictures from Oktoberfest in Germany. There we are. Iron Robin is there. Dante is also there. Um, away from the jerseys on the pitch, they also have families and they are big family men. There we are. Sometimes they make me want to really, really get into Oktoberfest and uh, enjoy some of the beer. <laughs> we get to the uh, Kotoko Express. It says, back to winning ways. The next stop is Pando. Okay, so the Kotoko family really looking forward to that game against the uh, Hakpando Heart of Lions. Remember, Accra Hatsuvoka secured a draw from there. So what can the uh, Porcupine Warriors also do? Okay, so uh, a lot of goodwill coming from the camp of uh, Santi Kotoko and their fans. Uh, Nana Boachi Herbal Center paid uh, a huge hotel bill that had been accumulated by Kumasiya Santi Kotoko. Great stuff there. There's no doubt about that. And Kotoko will continue to be on the top of the league table. This is how Kotoko put Chelsea to sleep. Is in the center spread um, moments uh, during that game captured. So Asante Kotoko continue the run, even though they... Uh, do not have a necessarily clean sheet. Bechim United securing a 1-0 win 
over Asante Kotoko last two match days. So uh, you can send me a message. Uh, there are messages coming on my Facebook wall. Also, 1760 is a text code. Uh, you can reach uh, the show on. And let's get talking about the big topics. Uh, Asama Jan and his teammates are expressing discomfort with playing in Egypt. What is going to uh, come out of all of these uh, protests from the camp of the Black Stars? Um, while administration is doing its bit, the players are also doing their bit. And uh, skipper Asama Jan says, uh, you know something? We are uncomfortable with playing on uh, the Egyptian grounds. Uh, and uh, he says that he and his teammates are against the idea. So there it is, uh, first leg played here. Uh, remember, this comes on the back of some protest. Uh, students are protesting, uh, you know, and uh, these have been reported very, very adequately by the international media. And the Egyptian FA remains, uh, you know, adamant about this and remains um, very confident that the security situation in Egypt is not as bad as is being portrayed. Uh, but uh, the team, uh, the Black Stars team, from administration through to the players, are saying that they are not comfortable with playing in Egypt. Let's see how all of that goes. Uh, in a bit, we'll be getting on the phone line to talk to the FA's uh, spokesperson, um, Ibrahim Sanidara. But for now, let's take a few text messages. Habakkuk Ewea Otu says, uh, 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 long, live, um, long live Man United. And Kumasi Asante Kotoko, big ups to all. Uh, okay, so he says that Kumasi Asante Kotoko, big ups as well. Okay, long live Kumasi Asante Kotoko. I now get the message. Kwejo Buedu Ayabuafo says, I think the GFA should do something about the second leg tie because Egypt is not safe for the game. And um, he is watching from Begro. Okay, so greetings to all uh, fans who are watching from Begro. And thank you very much for keeping it here on Joy Sports. We also uh, bring you some more um, in terms of the messages. It says, Neymar versus Bale. Go, Neymar, go. Okay, the uh, war between the war of, uh, you know, big talk. Uh, between the fans of uh, Real Madrid and Barcelona has already begun. Prince Kweku Ofori says Neymar versus Bill, go Neymar, go. Okay, let's see who will really win this one, whether it will be the uh, red and blue jersey or it will be the uh, white jersey. Uh, who wins this big El Clasico game? Um, we're trying to get through to uh, Ibrahim Sani Dara, a spokesperson of the Ghana Football Association, in a bit, but remember, you can send us a message on this topic when uh, we're getting through to, uh, you know, discussing this issue of the Black Stars and uh, whether or not uh, it's safe for them to play in Egypt, despite many assurances by the Egyptian FA that uh, the um, that the security situation is not that bad and uh, can contain the Black Stars team for that game. Okay, so we'll be doing some more and. Um, there's also been recent talk about the appointment of a technical director for the, uh, the Black Stars team. And uh, this uh, has received uh, different reactions from um, various quarters in football. Seasoned analyst uh, Christopher Opoku has rubbished the calls for uh, having a technical director. And uh, he says that it is totally unnecessary. Let's take a listen to him. I think that it is necessary to bring in a technical director. I, I, I'm not sure what, what informed the decision to get to th third party individuals to speak to Klaus Tokmala in the first place. And that's what we uncovered. I mean, if the GFA have come out to deny it, I think it's great news. It means they are not going to do it. And if they're not going to do it, it means Kwesi Apia will be allowed to progress as he has done. The Kwesi Apia that was employed in April 2012 is not the same Kwesi Apia today. This is a man that has grown into the job. He has progressed. He's shown as a fast learner, made mistakes in South Africa during the Cup of Nations. He has learned from them, made mistakes when we lost 0-1 to Zambia. I mean, apart from the altitude problems the boys suffered, he opened up and lost the match. But he's played compact football since then and has resulted in two away victories against Sudan and Lesotho. He has brought a, a level of competitiveness to the squad we have not seen under most coaches who tend to over-rely on players. He has not over-relied on anybody. He has shown excellent, excellent man management skills. And it has resulted in a return to the national team of the likes of uh, Asamojan, first of all, who had gone out of the team. He's come back and he's flourishing. He's using him behind the main striker instead of being the main striker himself. And the end result is that Asamojan has scored six times in the qualifying series. He's unearthed Abdul Majid Waris, who scored three times himself, and is forming a lethal partnership with Asamojan, which is absolutely brilliant. He has deepened the depth of the squad, so much so that 
with the return of Suleiman Tari, Mike Lessian, and the rest of them, there is real competition for places. Not in the starting 11, mind, but in the squad itself. Now, Kosiapia has a headache of even picking a final 25, let alone a final 11. So it means players are actually fighting. He has dealt with player indiscipline in the best possible manner. He has shown the players that he cannot be trifled with. He handled Sule Muntari brilliantly. I mean, Muntari messed up in Lesotho, thought he had done the right thing. Then Apia decided to ignore him. Then he started calling Apia, and Apia wouldn't pick his, his phone. He gets influential people, including his mother, to beg on his behalf. Kwesi Apia says no. It took his wife effort in buying a plane ticket for Kwesi Apia to travel to Italy before Sule Muntari was down on his knees, begging with tears in his eyes to be allowed back into the team. And Kwesi Apia had to lay down some ground rules for him. End result, Muntari plays out of his skin against the Egyptians. Job done. Michael Essien was disinterested in playing for the Black Stars because he has suffered anterior cruciate ligament damage on two occasions while on national duty. Kwesi manages to bring him back. I remember that morning when his name was announced. It took everybody by surprise. But he got the job done. And Essien is once again an integral part of the squad. You look at Kevin Prince Barting. The chase had gone on for so long. He managed to bring him back, and only injuries have stopped the Schalke midfielder from playing for the Black Stars. For me, absolutely brilliant. And then he played a huge psychological game by bringing Richard Kingston back into the Black Stars. Yes, people had a field day on social media networks talking about Uli Lefax and poking fun about his, his <laughs> age, whether it was true or not. But Kwesi Apia selected Richard Kingston for two reasons. One, it was to give Fatah Odada the proverbial kick up the backside because he was being too comfortable in his role as a number one goalkeeper. It stiffened Fatah Odada up, and I thought he did better against Egypt than he did against the Zambians. And then, of course, Kwarase would also have fought for his place. So I, I'm told the quality of training when it came to goalkeepers and the training was brilliant before the match. Secondly, it also took the pressure off the players because Ricky Kingston was a subject of conversation for every Ghanaian fan. They didn't even look at the other players, and it allowed them to focus. Now, if anybody tells me that Kwesi Apia has not developed tactically ever since taking over this job, then ask yourself why he would select two left-backs and yet use a right-sided defender at left-back against Egypt. Because he... he, he it could thought, have failed. It could have failed, but he realized that Daniel Opari was probably the only person who could curtail Salah's attacks down the right. What happens? Opari has a superb match. For my money, he was the man of the match. Most of the players did so well. You can mention the Montaios, the Essians, everybody. But I thought Opari stood out because the job he was given to do, he did it to perfection. And as a result, the Egyptians just could not maximize the threat down the right with Ahmed Fatih and Mohamed Salah. Case closed. I mean, if that is not a mark of somebody who has grown tactically into the job, I don't know what else is. And if scoring six times against seven-time African champions Egypt, who before the match had won every single game in World Cup qualifying, is not enough. To determine a metal of Kwesi Apia as a coach, I don't know what else is. So for me, it is not necessary. He uses Samade, Francis Otia Kente, and Ben Kofi as sounding boards. The three of them have helped him. Two of them have coached him before. Samade and Otia Kente were the coaches in charge of Kumasi Asante Kotoko when they won the league title in 1992. And so he respects them a lot. He goes to them. They have unofficial meetings. They judge or they come at solutions. And, he, and clearly he uses them. When he makes mistakes, he learns from them. And that's a hallmark of a good coach. All the great coaches of this world had bad beginnings. I am yet to hear about a coach who is considered great today who hasn't been sacked before in his career or who hasn't gone through difficult times. Kwesi Apia has gone through a rocky patch and he's come through. He's on the verge of qualifying the Black Stars for the World Cup and being the first indigenous coach to do so. And many, many have forgotten that he won us our first ever All-Africa Games gold in Maputo in Mozambique two years ago. Someone would say who is interested in that anyway. Well, that's a hallmark of a winner. By winning that particular gold medal, he's one of only five indigenous coaches that have won honors at national level. That has got to count for something. Because if you look at um, most our national team setups uh, on the continent, we, we prefer you know, to go in for uh, foreign managers, uh, if, if you like. So um, if, if you're a local lad and you get the opportunity to uh, get okay. to manage your okay, team, fine. Uh, then maybe it's for certain reasons that you'd have gotten the job. No, no, anyway. but, no but let's do the maths, shall we? I mentioned five people. CK Jeffy won the African Nations Cup with Ghana. Mm -hmm. Osam Dudu won the African Nations Cup with Ghana. Won the... African Youth Soccer uh, Tournament with Ghana, Samade, 
also won the Under-17 World Cup for the Black Starlets. Mm -hmm. uh, you're looking at... Uh, there's one of, one of the local uh, person I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to remember, and then Kwesi Apia. There are five of them who are indigenous. If you take the foreign coaches who are one honest, there are only two. Otto Fister, 1991, under 17. And Giuseppe Dosena, 1999, African youth under 20. Yeah. So even if you use that as a basis, then you've got to start asking yourself that wasn't it time, isn't, wasn't it time for us to have appointed a local coach when we did? I understand the GFA's argument at the time that they had not empowered enough local coaches to have taken over. But having seen the work that Kosiapi has put in to get us to this particular level, I will state categorically that there's absolutely no need to appoint anybody as a technical director of the Black Stars, especially when it has a sounding board of the caliber of the Otia Kentens, the Benkofis, and the Samadis, with others still to come. There's no need. Okay, so uh, that is uh, Christopher Opoku. Uh, he was interviewed by the man uh, Kwame Chimo Ajiman. So um, that is it. Let's... Um, let's... Uh, get into some more uh, stories here. Unfortunately, we're unable to get through to Ibrahim Sanida. We'll keep trying. Uh, when we get him, we will put him on immediately uh, to bring us uh, up to speed on what the, uh, what's going on in the background as regards to getting a venue switch from um, Cairo uh, for the return leg of the Black Stars Egypt game. Let's go ahead and do some more. Now we focus on Andre Dede Ayou, who uh, is putting in a lot, but, well, uh, not getting the results really. Um, and um, so I'm doing the day I use says that um, it's time that uh, Marseille gave up on the idea of winning the Champions League because uh, they went uh, one two down against Napoli on Tuesday, leaving them without a point at the bottom of Group F, which. Uh, includes um, English and German sides Arsenal and Dortmund respectively. So uh, it just tells you that, uh, you know, uh, Olympic Marseille do have a very tall order. Let's also focus on Richmond Boachi Adam, who is uh, being sent on loan to La Liga side uh, Elche for the season. And according to him, um, the player um, is uh, still setting his sights on a future with Juventus, where he originally belongs. The 20-year-old Ghanaian uh, player um, has been praised for his performances so far, scoring twice during seven appearances. However, while becoming a Bianconeri regular, uh, remain, uh, becoming a Bianconeri regular remains the big dream of the youngster. So let's see how all of that goes. And also, uh, Kevin Prince Boating uh, is looking ahead to that big uh, game between Schalke and Borussia Dortmund, uh, the 26-year-old player. Has already become an instant hit for uh, Schalke and is looking forward to giving off a very, very big performance against uh, Borussia Dortmund. So let's see how all of that goes. And also, uh, Egypt want to play Zambia ahead of the second leg game against Ghana. Now, Egypt has tentatively accepted to face uh, a request, uh, has uh, accepted a request tentatively to play Zambia in a friendly match on November 14 to prepare Ghana, to prepare for the World Cup qualifying reverse encounter against Ghana. The test match against the Chipolopolo will be played four days after the Pharaoh's open camp in Cairo. Now, the Egypt uh, FA boss Gamal Alam has revealed that his outfit will not name a new substantive Ferris coach uh, before the November 19 clash with the Black Stars winning. Bob Bradley will stay in charge of the seven-time African champions. And also we go to the Ghana Premier League where uh, Willie Kluche, the technical director of uh, Inter Allies, says that he is uh, confident that the club will uh, bounce back in its campaign after a 3-0 win over Bichim United. And uh, it says that that victory will surely turn the club's season around. Now, um, Inter allies, the debutants, uh, were, have been unable to uh, find their feet in the Globe Premier League since uh, the season started. But that uh, big win has uh, ensured a lot of confidence uh, returning to 
the club. And uh, he says that uh, it will do a lot to turn around the fortunes of the club. Let's now focus on uh, Michael Helegbe, who is uh, now in the squad for the um, Heart of Lions game. Now, Asante Kotoko coach will include winger Michael Helegbe in the squad for the trip to Kwando to face Heart of Lions in the Premier League on Sunday. The 28-year-old former Ghana under-23 captain picked up an injury in the 2-1 win over Adriana Stars on match day in the um, match day one fixture at the Sunyani Coronation Park. The influential attacker featured in a reserves league game for the Porcupine Warriors last weekend, but was unfit for selection in the 2-1 win over Brecombe Chelsea on Wednesday. Helleway gave himself up to Friday to get fully fit after attending three times in the week, after attending training three times in the week. So um, Helleway has returned, and striker Seydou Bansi still has more time to spend in the treatment room. We also go to Ugandan import Uchaya, who uh, is uh, happy at Asante Kotoko. So uh, the uh, Ugandan buy, he um, has been downplaying the uh, reports of a possible exit from Asante Kotoko. Now the Porcupine Warriors are reportedly planning to mutually terminate the contract of the Ugandan international due to his huge wages. The left back has fallen down the pecking order fueling reports that he's no more in need at the club. Now the former Kampala City Council defender uh, has moved to squash those reports, says he, and uh, he says that he is happy at Asante Kotoko. And uh, also, uh, coach uh, Tony Loco says that he is unhappy with the very first goal that uh, Asante Kotoko recorded against his side, Brekum Chelsea. And I remember that Asante Kotoko uh, scored uh, the first goal against... Um, he says that the first goal that was scored in the um, game against Chelsea shouldn't have been um, allowed. And so uh, he okay, so uh, he um, says that it shouldn't have been allowed, uh, having issues with officiating there. Okay, so uh, let's get on the phone line. Uh, we we uh, now are. Uh, Talking to uh, Jerome Autry, who writes for the Kotoko Express newspaper, looking ahead to that big game between Asante Kotoko and uh, Heart of Lions. Thank you very much, Jerome, for joining us. Hello, Jerome. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Thank you very much for uh, joining us on the show today. Well, it's uh, a big game, uh, Heart of Lions versus Asante Kotoko. Accra Hearts of Oak went there, were able to come out with a draw, and uh, this time around is Asante Kotoko. Uh, now, Asante Kotoko is going into this game having been bruised by uh, Bichem United, uh, ending that uh, winless, uh, that, uh, you know, sorry, that, um, that clean sheet that Asante Kotoko had recorded from the start of the season. Um, going into this game, is the confidence waned in any way? Hello, Nat, you can come. You well, can come uh, again. I didn't hear the last bit of Okay, the I'm asking if uh, the confidence uh, in the camp is still intact, considering the fact that um, that 100% uh, record has now been broken by Bechem United. Yes, it is. I mean, we are very confident. The players are very confident. I have had the opportunity of talking to them after the Bechem Chelsea game, and they are extremely confident. There, there are some matches that they play uh, which uh, they self-motivate themselves. The, one of those matches is against... Uh, Hearts of Lions, which is coming on this Sunday. And if you talk to them, they, they already are aware of the, the expectation or the task ahead of them, which is to win at all costs, particularly so when uh, Hearts of Folk went there and got um, what was a favorable result. We are targeting victory. If, if you recall, last season, Kotoko went there, and um, it was a very difficult game. But in the end, we were able to get the three maximum points, which enhanced our chances of uh, winning last season's title. And so the boys are confident and looking up to another victory as they did last season. All right, now tell me about uh, uh, Michael Helegbe and his return and what it does to uh, the fold of Asante Kotoko going into this game. Well, it's, it's, it's going to add so much because he is one of our key players. If you recall, he, he got injured in our first game, played just about... 30, 40 minutes, and, and, and he was stretched off because of an ankle injury. And since then, he's, he's, he's not been playing. 
he recovered two weeks ago because I saw him at the training grounds training and it is good news for us that such a key midfielder is, is coming back into our fold. I am also aware that uh, Bobby Ansan, who was also injured, and um, surprisingly, his was also uh, an ankle injury. He also returned last week, and I know that he, he could be part of the team going to Pando uh, this Sunday. Um, I'm however not sure of uh, Seydou Bansi, who again suffered an ankle injury. It's, it's, it's so interesting that all Kotoko players who have been injured in the last few weeks all suffered ankle injuries. Say Dubansi, I'm not sure he has fully recovered, even though I know he trained last week. And so the return of these players, if indeed we are going to get all three of them, really are going to boost our chances of um, putting up a good team to beat Heart of Lions at uh, Pando on Sunday. All right. Um, we also talk about your U Ugandan import, uh, Ochaya. He's been uh, in the, 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 you know, he's been... Uh, the subject of reports that uh, he could be possibly leaving the club, and he says that he's confident. Uh, what would you have to say about that as well? What's exactly the well, situation? I, I have not spoken to Uchaya in a long while. Uh, um, I cannot confirm whether indeed he's, he's not happy. What I know is that he, he hasn't played for the reserve side, and I mean, for any footballer who was part of the senior team and now has been relegated to the reserve side, definitely would have some feelings of discomfort. If that is what it is, then I think it's, it's, it's a natural thing. He probably has to back up and um, make sure that he gets a, a chance into the senior team. His problem, as I see it, has been that he's been in and out of um, Ghana playing for the Uganda national team. And as you know, when that happens, definitely somebody would have to take your place. And maybe fortunately or unfortunately for him, somebody like Eric Donko has been playing so well in his position. And for any good coach, it would be difficult to put such a player aside and revert to somebody like Ochaya, who has been inconsistent with the senior team at the moment. All right. So thank you very much, uh, Gerald Matre. I will be talking to you uh, subsequently, and let's see how all of that goes uh, within your camp. Thank you. Uh, so uh, that was uh, Jerome Autry, who's part of the uh, Communications Directorate of Kumasi Asante Kotoko. There's a message here from Nana Yauda Costa that says, from the camp uh, of the Friends of the Media, Nat, um, Ashgold must fall to heart, likewise Man City to Chelsea, and Madrid and Barca will be a cracker, but Madrid will carry the day. Greetings to Echo Browser and K Lava. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Nana Yauda Costa, for that message. I'll be sharing some more uh, with you in a bit. Uh, remember, you can reach us uh, through 1760. Um, also, um, there is a Prince Bilal Achulo. Uh, uh, he says, I hope the black stars stand out in Egypt. Okay, so we'll be sharing some more messages with you as we go ahead uh, on the, um, uh, on the uh, matches to expect for this week. And let's also uh, take a look at uh, the man, J.E. Sapong. Like I mentioned to you, Coach J.E. Sapong, has bowed out of Adriana Stars. This comes after a lot of pressure from the fans, and uh, he feels his life is under threat, and uh, he's quitting the club after meeting the club owner, the club owner, Domahene Oseadeyo Ajimambedu, uh, the second. Um, so the man who previously was in charge of Liberty Professionals now bows out of Adriana Stars. And also we focus on another coach who left... Um, his uh, job, which was the Midyama SC job, and I'm talking about uh, Hans van der Pluim, and he's been explaining uh, why he left uh, Midyama SC, and there are many. So he says that a poor opening sequence of results uh, with Midyama SC informed his decision to quit. So uh, Hans van der Pluim. Hans van der Pluim, um, he... So he has now uh, quit uh, as uh, the manager of Midyama SC. So two major coaching casualties um, as we go into match day nine of the Ghana Premier League. Now Kujo Fianu is also backing Accra, uh, his side, uh, Ashanti Gold, to beat Accra Hearts of Oak on Sunday. Now uh, the chief executive of Ashanti Gold, uh, Kujo Fianu, he says that the quality of his side uh, makes, it, makes him very, very confident that they can deliver the maximum points against Accra Hearts of Oak, who will be coming in with a former coach of Ashanti Gold, 
in the person of uh, Coach David Duncan. Can he um, unsettle his former side? Well, let's see how all of that goes. So uh, that's the man, Kujo Fiano, and he says that it surely is going to be. Okay, so uh, we go uh, over to, uh, we'll be trying to get through to uh, Muhib Said, who is in charge of communications at the Crow Hearts of Oak, but um, hey, we're yet to get him on the phone line. Let's uh, focus on some more uh, stories here. Let's now look at the fixtures we expect for the weekend. I'm talking about um, the Ghana Premier League. Amidal's professionals, they play Dwarfs, Bichem United host Hazakas, uh, Inter Allies, Inter allies go away to Brickham Chelsea, and of course, after that big 3 0 win recorded in the last uh, match day, they have a lot of confidence. Heart of Lions host Asante Kotoko Liberty Professionals, they play a Dubiase, and Ashanti Gold play Accra Hearts of Oak. Faisal, King Faisal, they play um, a Diana Stars, who are now without coach uh, J.E. Sapong. Mediama SC, who are also without a husband, Apuim, they will play against uh, Wa All Stars. So these are the matches to expect uh, for the weekend, and uh, we'll see how the results go on uh, the Monday edition of the show. Let's also focus on uh, the Division I League, which uh, is beginning on November 8th to start uh, the process of seeing who will uh, be able to get the qualification into the Premier uh, League for the next season. So surely on November uh, 9, um, the league will begin. And this comes after a board meeting of the uh, Division I League Board. All right, so remember you're still here on uh, Sports Today on the Joy Sports Channel on Mouth TV. Keep your messages coming in. Uh, we'll do a round of commercials, and after that, we do some more right here. Remember, we're building up as well to um, the uh, fastest human, Ghana's fastest human it is surely a very, very big day uh, tomorrow at the Babara Stadium, and uh, we will be uh, focusing on what's going to happen there as well. Ghana's fastest human will see who picks up that big prize, uh, who picks up the total big prize of 40,000 Ghana CDs. Never ever done before in athletics history, and we surely are also going to get a new set of um, uh, you know, world-class printers to start rivaling the likes of Usain Bolt, hopefully. Well, uh, we're back to do some more after the round of commercials. Okay, so we do some more, and uh, the message is coming in. Gabriel Nanampon Sanhezel says, Hearts will trash Asante Kotoko. Kudos, Nat. And then uh, Sewonu Eric says, Nat, Accra Hearts of Oak will beat Ashanti Gold, and Kotoko will fall at Bando. Okay, this clearly is a Hearts of Oak fan. You send in your messages as well. El Clasico, Barcelona, they will host uh, Real Madrid. Who wins this one? The whole of the world will be uh, focusing on that derby. There's no doubt about that. And of course, as we do all of that, before that, actually, everybody will be turning attention on Manchester United are playing Stoke uh, on the Joy Sports channel on Multi TV. Grab your Digibox uh, and be part of the action. Let's uh, turn our attention to uh, Bafana Bafana, who will be playing Spain in an international friendly. So uh, the South African national team, the Bafana Bafana, will play uh, current world champions Spain in an international friendly. And um, and this will be uh, at the Soccer City on November 19. Remember, November 19 is the date of destiny when uh, the Black Stars will uh, finally seal off qualification for Brazil 2014, uh, hopefully. Let's also turn attention to uh, Nigeria, where coach uh, Stephen Keshi is unhappy with unpaid wages of the national team. Well, uh, here in Ghana, while well, uh, people are you know, going on and on about uh, the bonuses for the team being too much, uh, Nigeria, uh, the head coach, is uh, complaining about um, not being paid. And uh, this has been his lowest point. Uh, he says that uh, last month uh, he clocked two years as Eagles uh, handler. And he told mtnfootball.com that he's being owed salary for as many as eight months. And this uh, has been his most disappointing experience as coach of Nigeria. Keshi is on a monthly salary of over 30,000 U.S. dollars, which is uh, more than uh, 5 million naira. He led Nigeria to the third Africa Cup of Nations triumph in February. And uh, he 
is on the verge of qualifying the country to the Brazil 2014 World Cup. The, Egypt's, uh, the Eagles won 2-1 uh, against Ethiopia in the first leg playoff. And uh, the return leg will be played in Calabar. Okay, let's do some more. And uh, the Ivorian FA is facing a lot of uh, backlash over uh, coach uh, Sabri Lamushi. And um, uh, there, are, there are many, many issues going on within the camp of um, the... Uh, The elephants, and of course, uh, so there are many uh, fans in Ivory Coast who uh, do not want to continue the relationship with uh, Coach Sabri Lamushi, but uh, the Ivorian FA has thrown weight behind him and uh, says that uh, they should uh, support him to enable the Frenchman achieve his chief objective of qualifying for. Brazil 2014, and uh, speaking to reporters in the country's commercial capital, Abidjan, on Thursday, the body's vice chairman, uh, Sori Diabate, refuted media reports that the coach earns a whopping $260,000 um, uh, per month, which has sparked a lot of criticism from across the nation. The 41-year-old former Monaco Inter Milan and um, Marseille midfielder, appointed in May 2012 to succeed François Zahoui, um, who led the elephants to the finals of the Nations Cup last year. Um, it's surely not uh, in the good books of the fans right now. He was born in Tunisia, and Lamushi has never managed anything before taking the um, Ivorian job. And um, now the uh, boss of Esperance du Tunis, uh, Maher Kanzari, has been fired. And remember that uh, Esperance du Tunis were unable to read the final of the, U uh, the CAF Champions League and that this has resulted in the axing of their coach. Defeat sometimes brings a lot of trouble. There's uh, no doubt about that. And also, uh, there is a new boss for the uh, Championship of African Nations, CHAN, for the local organizing committee in South Africa. Molefi Oliphant uh, is the one who will be in charge of the uh, local organizing committee for uh, Chan 2014. Um, this uh, follows the uh, resignation of the uh, board chairman uh, who is Chief Amuelo Nonko Nyaya, and uh, he resigned from the board on Friday, October 18. And Dr. Olifant, who is a CAF executive committee member, will head the body tasked with a successful organization of next year's tournament scheduled from January 11 to February 1. And uh, he was also a former president of the South African Football Association. Safa and the tournament will be played in three host cities, namely Cape Town, um, Mangaung, and uh, Polokwane. And um, also, Cheikh Tiote of uh, Cote d'Ivoire is expected to be the captain in uh, the um, Tyneware Derby, and uh, Cheikh Tiote surely will be leading uh, the. Newcastle side in this weekend's uh, round of matches. So uh, Sunderland, Newcastle, and it's game on. And that surely is a very good uh, development, adding to the credentials of uh, Cheik Tiote. Those were the highlights from the UEFA Europa League. Let's also take a look at the fixtures for the English Premier League um, uh, for the weekend. Remember, Manchester United is the big focus uh, because that will be live on the Joy Sports channel. Manchester United Stoke, that's over there, and uh, we will be expecting that game. It will be live here on the Joy Sports channel on Multi TV. Liverpool, West Bromwich, Albion, uh, Aston Villa play uh, Everton, and of course, Arsenal go away to Crystal Palace. Uh, Cardiff City play Norwich, and uh, Fulham will play Southampton. Sunderland. They play Newcastle United after that 1-1 draw with uh, Sheriff FC. And also Chelsea play Manchester City, another big, big one. And um, West Ham United play Swansea while Tottenham host um, Hull City. All right, so very shortly we'll be bringing you the moment of the day. One big uh, name boxer he wants to run for president in his country. We'll be telling you about that in the latter stages of the show. But right now let's uh, focus on what to expect for the weekend in the Spanish La Liga. And of course uh, these are 
the uh, the fixtures. Uh, Rayo Vallecano play uh, Real Valladolid, and Celta Vigo play Malaga, while Barcelona play Real Madrid. Of course, that's the big game. Granada will go away to Elche, which will feature Richmond Boachi, Adam Levante play uh, Espanol. Osasuna go away to Sevilla, Villarreal play Valencia, while Almeria play Real Sociedad, Atletico Madrid uh, play Real Betis, and uh, Athletic Bilbao play Hetafe. Okay, so there it is, uh, Syria. The Italian Syria um, will be the next destination. Sampdoria play uh, Atalanta. Inter Milan play Hellas Verona. Torino go away to uh, Napoli. And uh, Bologna play Livorno, while Sassuolo play Catania. And uh, Kevo Verona play uh, Fiorentina. And Genoa play Juventus, while Parma play AC Milan. Udinese play AS Roma. And Lazio play Cagliari. In the German Bundesliga, this is what to expect in terms of the big games that will be played this weekend. Uh, there's a lot of action uh, throughout the German Bundesliga. VfB Stuttgart play Nuremberg. Augsburg go away to Leverkusen, while Bayern Munich uh, host Hertha Berlin. Hannover 96 play TSG Hoffenheim and Braunschweig play Mainz, while Schalke 04 play uh, Borussia Dortmund. That surely is the big game for the weekend. Werder Bremen play Wolfsburg and Freiburg play Hamburg, while Borussia Mönchengladbach play Eintracht Frankfurt. To the French League uh, now, and uh, the French League uh, is going to bring us that game between Nantes and Lille, and uh, Marseille continue uh, to uh, keep their heads up in the uh, French League uh, by playing Stade de Reim. Nice, they go away to Bastia. Guingamp host Ajaccio, while Sochaux go away to Lorient. Toulouse play Stade Rennes. Evian Tonon Gaillard play Valenciennes, while Bordeaux play Montpellier. And AS Monaco play Olympique Lyon. And of course, Paris Saint-Germain, they play uh, Saint-Étienne. All right, so let's do uh, some commercials. And after that, we will uh, be looking ahead to the uh, fastest human final, Ghana's fastest human, the big final right here. And of course, we will be looking at the big moment of the day. course so we look forward to that one it's a uh, stoke uh, playing manchester united at old trafford let's now build up to ghana's fastest human and um it's set everything is set to go for kumasi at the babara stadium uh, let's now take a look at how it has happened from day one we, we are very, very, very happy. Uh, we were expecting about 100 because the 100 meters is a specialty race and not everyone can do it. So to get 372 in Yajipa, uh, the next steps are we want to do the eliminations because out of the 372, we want 50. So we are doing eliminations in Kumasi on Monday, BA and uh, Shanti region in Kumasi. Then we come to Accra. Eastern region, Volta region, and Greater Accra will do theirs the following week. Then we go to Takrade, Central region, and Western region will do theirs. Then we go to uh, Tamale, Upper East, Upper West, and the Northern region will do theirs. And then we'll get the 50, house them for three weeks. They will do the final of finals, we'll pay them, and then we'll pick 10 athletes to go through an intense program for one year. It's going to be focusing on the three main areas that takes an athlete from being a local athlete to a world-class athlete. Nutrition psychology, access to training, I mean, access to new and improved training and coaching methods. These are the three areas. And we're working with Cowbell, the Yale Sports Center, Vesalis Pro, uh, uh, Pippers Gym to do this work. Unlike other sports, if you want to compete in the Olympic Games, you have to run for a country. So 
even if these guys become the fastest man in the world, he still has to run for Ghana or a country. So they have to toe that line. So that check will keep track of, of that. Now, the reason why we're pushing them into the school system in America is uh, the NCAA has a certain program that whilst they're in school, while they're learning a trade, they're also going through a sports cycle that is very intensive, that is, will come back to, to help us. So uh, we don't have to keep an eye on them. That system keeps an eye on them for us because if I am the school and I've given Kojomisa a scholarship to come, I am making sure Kojomisa is doing what he has to do to keep that scholarship going. And as long as Kojomisa keeps that scholarship going, Ghana is a beneficiary. And that's how it works. You know, now the local ones that, that, that are stuck here, what we're doing is we're trying to raise some more money to be able to continue this program, you know, so that it's not like, okay, it's finished, now, now what? You know, so we're working on getting some to go out, and the ones that stay here will pick the serious ones and focus on them, you know, every year, send some out, pick some to focus on for a year, send some out, pick some, and so forth, for seven years. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting change. I'll say it again. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting change. In the past, we have done certain things. Some worked, some didn't work. Uh, we've gone to the point right now where our athletic, our athletes have dried up. So we're trying to do something different. Um, we, we gave you an invitation June 14th. You came. You can have a product. You can have the best product or the best service. If nobody knows about it, it's not going anywhere. On the other side, you can have a lousy product or lousy service, but if everybody hears about it, everybody wants a piece of it. We asked you to come June 14th. We told you who we were my partner, Captain Sam, and myself, doing this amazing job, which is looking for athletes for Ghana. We told you how we're going to do it. To date, I'm very, very happy to tell you that from that time, we have been able to go to Kumasi. We have launched in Kumasi. Uh, the mayor hosted us there. Uh, we went to the athletes there. We told them about Ghana's fastest human, which is we have a big prize money 40,000 Ghana cities that we want to pay to two people. While in Kumasi, I found out that Fantabulous Kotoko, Kotoko, Rich Kotoko, their top player, he gets paid 1,000 cities a month. That is 12,000 Ghana cities for the year. We are paying 20,000 Ghana cities to one person, a man, another 20,000 Ghana cities to a female, together 40,000, and we are fighting to get a small platform on the media. The FA Cup that just got played, the winning prize money was, I think, 35,000 CDs to be shared among the whole team, coaches, the whole nine yards. We are paying 40,000 to two individuals. Why? We're paying this amount of money to bring attention to Ghana Athletics. We want to make Ghana Athletics very sexy, and when I say that, people don't understand. When someone is sexy, people fight over them. People want to be seen with them. And that's what we want for Ghana Athletics. We want to make it in such a point where companies come in and say, oh, don't go with this person, go with us. Oh, don't go with us, go with this person. And it has already started. There are so many revelations that we are going to find during this journey. Captain will tell you um, he is the head of Aspire. Aspire is sponsored by the Qatar royal family, and each year they look for footballers. They start with 60,000 people, and they pick four footballers. Last year, one of the guys that they picked, or if I didn't even pick, but saw him running around doing football, they realized he had athletic talent. They pushed him aside, got him into running athletics, Last week, he ran a 10.49 seconds. Now he says he will not play football anymore. He has an athletic scholarship, and he's going to be running even faster. He's part of our program. What I'm saying is, 
because there are no avenues for athletics. Our athletes have now gone to football, they've gone to basketball, they've gone to all other sports because they think there's no avenue for athletics. Well, we have brought it back. We are starting with this big prize money and we're saying that, like I always say, it's like prospecting for gold. Why do people prospect, prospect for gold? Very, very dangerous thing. Well, the end result, the incentive is the gold. And because of that end result, that incentive, people go and do galamse and dig tons of dirt to get a few nuggets. They then polish the nuggets, bind them, and get the gold. Same thing we're doing. Our incentive, our end result is a big prize money. Our gold is a 40,000 Ghana cities. That's 20,000 US dollars, a lot of money. I wish I could run. I will try and get that money, because I need the money, God knows. <laughs> now we're opening this up to everyone, because like prospecting for gold, the more the merrier, because we want to find a few nuggets. And to find a few nuggets, you have to dig tons of dirt, as I've explained. So the tons of dirt we're digging is the masses that we're opening this up to. If you are 80 years old, you can run the 100 meters. Please sign up. We will pay you the money if you win. If you are three years old and you can run fast, please sign up. Where we are right now, we're using this month for registration. Our partners, Fidelity Bank, have been so gracious and the forms are at every... Okay, could that be the fastest human? Well, let's see how it goes. Remember that we'll be uh, covering that and bringing that to you, the full event, uh, later on. In the week, and uh, the news coming in from the camp of boxing indicates that uh, the, uh, the some uh, licensees have been banned for a total of eight years. I'm talking about uh, Solomon Otulati, who is a uh, matchmaker promoter, and um, Joseph Kwefu and Michael Patterson. They've been banned uh, for a total of eight years now. Solomon Otulati, who's said to be the chief architect of a, a match fixing. Uh, scandal is uh, taking four years uh, a ban. Okay, so that will mean that he will not be expected to take part in any boxing activity and his licenses have also been revoked. Same will apply to um, Joseph. Um, the same will also apply to uh, Joseph Kwefu and Michael Patterson. And um, this is because of a, a, box, a boxing bout that was hosted here in Accra on September 20 where Frank Doji, a Ghanaian boxer, knocked out uh, his uh, Algerian opponent, and um, Jamel Nasreddin, uh, Nasreddin Dahou. He knocked him out in the third round, only for his corner to throw in the towel, rather. So uh, Frank Doge's corner threw in the towel after he had knocked out his opponent. And uh, this uh, was uh, eventually followed up by an investigation which proved that there was some match fixing in the background. So it means that um, these individuals have been uh, banned also, um, Marcel Niamutete, who also climbed onto the uh, ring, uh, he is also banned. So uh, there are other individuals who have been reprimanded as well as part of this uh, uh, disciplinary measure by the Ghana Boxing Authority. So that's it. And talking about boxing, there'll be a major discussion on boxing tomorrow uh, on the Joy Sports Link on Joy 99.7 FM with uh, current chairman of the Ghana Boxing Authority, uh, lawyer Peter Zwenes, as well as uh, a past chairman. Uh, lawyer Moses Fu Amoini, uh, that discussion surely will be a rich one, and you'd have to stay tuned. We'll be bringing you excerpts on Monday's edition of the show. Now we go to the moment of the day, which I'll leave you with. Well, now um, I'll do a few text messages before that, and um, it's rather interesting what is happening in the world of sport, and I'll tell you the reason why in a bit. Okay, now let me... Uh, Take a few messages now uh, on my Facebook wall before we go for our moment of the day. Now, uh, Kukua Pia says, um, all the multimedia channels on her Digibox are not showing. Okay, so this is what you're going to do. Uh, call 0302-211688. And um, you can go through the rescanning process uh, on your Digibox. Okay, and also uh, this one from Sewanu Eric says... Um, uh, my darling club FC Barcelona will surely beat uh, Real Madrid at the company when I want to inform all Barcelona fans of Bator that they should be in their jerseys tomorrow. Now, Barca still no size. And Derek Popea says that, uh, not, I, it will make a cool game 
for Kotoko. Okay, he says that uh, uh, Asante Kotoko will surely win that encounter uh, uh, tomorrow. Okay, uh, those were your messages. Let me do uh, some more. Um, another one says, uh, Nat, Basa will score 3-0. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Well, Basa will score 3-0. Okay, thank you very much, Madhu Thomas, for that other message. Um, um, there are some more messages uh, coming in. But remember, anybody who's having issues uh, with uh, switching their Digibox, so just call the front desk of uh, Multi-TV at 0302-211-688. 0302-211-688. And um, you will be spoken to and you'll be taken through the process of rescanning your Digibox for extra clear pictures. Remember that uh, there was a um, uh, you know, a process here uh, at Multi TV that ensured that our satellite transmission was even better. So you should expect some better. Okay, so uh, there are some, uh, you know, uh, numbers that will also appear on your screen that you can go through. And then uh, Prince Anakweku, for instance, another one that says uh, Neymar will prove uh, to Real that he should have been giving, uh, he should have been the world's most expensive player, Barca for life. Thank you very much. Prince and okay, so I'll say thank you to everybody. Thanks to you. Thanks to the whole production team. It's a great weekend. Uh, the uh, La Liga will bring us the uh, El Clasico, while of course the EPL brings us Manchester United Stoke. Big game on the Joyce Post channel on Multi TV. Okay, so right now I take you to the moment of the day, and guess what? Okay, uh, Vitaly Klitschko wants to run for the presidency of Ukraine. Hmm. So uh, there it is, uh, Vitaly Klitschko wanting to run for the presidency of Ukraine after an illustrious career. Remember that he's not the only one uh, who's in boxing and is in politics. Um, obviously, the man. And uh, this is one bout uh, that he fought against uh, Lennox Lewis. And uh, Mani, Manuel Dapidran Pacquiao, also is uh, a congressman in the Philippines. So Vitaly, who's the other brother of uh, WBA and IBF champion Vladimir, debuted in Ukrainian politics shortly after his retirement in 2005. And he founded the Ukrainian Democratic Alliance for Reform, UDAR, meaning hit, and, uh, hit or punch in Ukrainian. He ran for the 2006 uh, mayoral elections in Kiev, and Klitschko's close parties won 14% of the vote in last year's parliamentary elections, earning him 40 seats um, in the uh, Verkhovna Rada, Ukraine's parliament. Okay, so uh, there we are. Big memories, uh, this bout, which he fought against uh, Lennox Lewis and Vitaly Klitschko. He wants to run for the presidency of Ukraine. All right, so on that note, we leave you uh, on this uh, weekend edition of the show. It's been Sports Today, and that is uh, Vitaly Klitschko with uh, gutted eyes. Okay, so uh, Vitaly Klitschko wanting to run for the presidency. I'm sure that you'd have... Many, many thoughts about that. We'll continue those discussions and more here on Joyce. But keep it here because George Ado Jr. will be bringing you a football show later in the day as we look ahead to everything football for the big weekend. My name is Nathaniel Atto, and I have love for sport. <laughs>